Today, I'm excited to be with Janelle Hardy. She is a member of my Master Heart Business Mentoring Group, and she does really interesting work that I wanted to share with you all. She helps people write their memoirs. Uh, first, let me say hi to you, Janelle. Thanks for being here. Hi, George. I'm really happy to be here. Yeah. So I want to share your bio with the audience, and then we'll get into some tips and sort of why write a memoir and some tips on how to actually get started with doing it. So let me bring up your bio here. Um, so Janelle Hardy is the creator and teacher of an online transformational memoir writing course. And this is really key. Like it's not just about writing your history, mm -hmm. but it's the, the process actually heals. So the, this course that uh, Janelle you teach is called the art of personal myth making, art of personal myth making. So you use a process that is body-based. So it's not just in the head remembering things, but it's body-based. It's trauma-informed. So it um, utilizes your, your life's history, essentially, as a way of healing, right? And you also bring in fairy tales, and um, the course has themed modules to support a creative people in, in healing from their life stories as they write their memoirs. So your uh, Janelle's life experiences, I'm just continue reading here. Janelle's life experiences growing up in the far north of Canada as a solo mother and artist combined with her studies in anthropology and dance and 13 years of experience doing hands-on healing called structural integration. And that's all created a rich, compassionate and wide-ranging approach to life story work, writing and transformation. And the best way of learning uh, about Janelle is doing a two week, uh, sorry, not two weeks, it's two hour, <laughs> although people can do it, you know, in two weeks if they want to, two hour, and it's a free online on demand workshop called Outline Your Memoir. So be sure to check that out. It's, it's, it's free. It's two hours. Uh, it's on demand. So I'm, I'm assuming people can watch a little bit, do a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. so yeah. I'll be sure to put the link in the, in the notes. Um, below. So the first question I, I want to ask you, Janelle, is um, for those who have maybe never really thought about writing their memoir, uh, why, you know, it, like I said, you know, as, as I introduced you, it's not just about, okay, well, I was born and this year and then this happened and that happened and this happened. It's not just about recounting the facts in a bullet point of what happened in your life. But it's much more than that, the way that you teach it. So why is it, why should we write our memoir, especially in the way that you've been teaching people? Oh, good question. Let's take the should out of it. Okay, <laughs> <'Cause> yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. love shoulds. So someone sure. told me that shoulds are called the shitty shoulds because they're uh -huh. a way we can beat ourselves up. Yeah, well, what, why, why, what, what's the benefit? What's the, yeah. why might people be inspired or... Uh, yeah, what, what motivates people to, to do this? Yeah, I don't have to inspire anyone to want to write their memoirs. I would say that at least 80% of the people that I mention what I do to when I say help people write their memoirs, their eyes light up and they start confessing that they've held a longing to write their memoirs in, that they haven't started, but they know one day they really want to do this. The reasons um, vary, but it's really quite incredible how many people have actually been holding in their hearts a desire to maybe not write their memoir with the intention of publishing, um, but examine their life stories, be able to share some of their experiences with children or descendants or loved ones or even their community. Um, and so I approach this work more from the transformational perspective of wanting to offer an opportunity to grow and change. And I, when I first started teaching the art of personal mythmaking, I didn't even know it was memoir work, but I was using a lot of creative writing prompts and discovered that we were generating enough material to get people to the first draft of their memoir. And when I discovered that and I started sharing that and I saw people's eyes light up, I realized that there was a real hunger for um, support writing memoir that is also oriented towards the support necessary to face the more difficult or painful parts of your life. And that the reason so many people 
were holding on to this desire and doing nothing about it, sometimes for over 20 years, was of fear of being overwhelmed by certain stories or experiences they had, as well as not feeling resourced to know how to go about such an enormous creative project. Um, and I, I just, I have the tools and skills to offer that support. Mm. Yeah. So it really, thank you for sharing that. It's um, in the process of, like you said, healing through writing uh, and reflection, it's like there's enough material there. Um, and so what if someone says, well, I don't know, um, maybe there really isn't that much in my life to write about. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, maybe actually some people may have repressed or try to forget about the past, uh, especially if it's a traumatic situation. Um, any, mm -hmm. any kind of words of wisdom for us on that? I was giggling a little because I have had people say, I, I don't think I'm very interesting. I don't you know. I don't have any, any real stories to tell. And it's not true. <laughs> That's why it's kind of tickles my humor because everyone is just so interesting. And, um, and sometimes a coping mechanism is to kind of brush aside or, or push down certain memories or experiences. Um, this is where the body-based focus comes in so handy because we're, most of us live in, a, in cultures that really overemphasize the thinking mind and intellectual thought, rationalizing, critiquing, etc. <clears throat> and when we cut ourselves off from our body, we actually cut ourselves off from a lot of resource, including uh, res emotional responses, memory that gets stored in the body. So having done hands-on body work for so long, there's a very popular saying, and it really works, is the issue is in the tissue. So if we can shift our attention and our awareness into our tissues and, and invite our body into our process, it reveals not just difficult memories, but it reveals delight and beauty and joy that can also get um, pushed aside when we're not allowing the body to inform our experiences. Yeah, that's, uh, that's really good. Um, do you have any, uh, you know, let's, speaking of kind of body and grounding this, like maybe you could tell us a story or two of people who have been through uh, your memoir writing workshop and kind of what, what did it do for them? Oh, I, I have the most wonderful testimonials. I just, I can't even dream up what my course does for people until they tell me. Um, one student kind of shifted out of a need to be right and good all the time, which is a really restrictive state to be in when you're trying to be good and get it right and, and avoid mistakes. So one student was able to shift out of that and embrace, you know, the grumpy, the snarky, the um, more embarrassing memories of being a, a human teenager, for example. Um, hmm. another student was working on her memoir so I often I get people coming into the course from two different directions about half come in wanting the transformational support they're not really interested in writing a memoir but they're creative people so they like the idea and they're more interested in the the support that I offer for healing and other people come in really interested in writing their memoir and maybe with a bit of awareness that healing support might be useful, but not seeking it out. And then it all kind of moves into the one flow. Um, so I had another student who's a professional writer show up um, having been working on her memoir for years and getting nowhere. So kind of a third stream of people that show up are people who have actually started writing, but get stuck in the messy middle of the creative project and and realize that they just need some support and can't do it all alone. And so she was kind of in that state. And um, uh, yeah, and so she, by the end of, this was in my live course, I have a self-directed and a live version, but uh, she had 
discovered a completely new direction and themes for the story, which really supported her in moving forward, because uh, often a lack of clarity of the core theme is part of how we can get stuck, um, is just generating things without an orientation towards structure. And so she discovered this real clarity about the theme of her memoir, because with memoirs, we don't write everything in our life. We work with a, a theme. Um, <clears throat> and she managed to generate even more writing to reorganize the writing that she had and to get a book proposal written or almost finished, I think, which if you're aiming for publishing is a really necessary part of the process. Wow, that's fascinating that it's around, around a theme. Now, how, how might someone choose that theme? Um, <laughs> because, of course, <clears throat> our lives can be seen from many different angles um so yeah so if someone says well gosh i could look at it in this way or that way my 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 professional yeah. life my personal yeah. life or this situation or this relationship yeah how do you how, how do you advise them to that well this is where my outline your memoir workshop comes in and fairy tales mm -hmm. so fairy tales okay yeah tell us yeah, about or, that. why 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 using fairy tales within this part of this work I'll, I'll broaden it to ancient tales, not just fairy tales, oh, okay. but um, fairy tales is the mo most um, well-known version of ancient tales. I, I truly believe that there are forces outside of our individual selves available in the world, archetypal forces and stories that uh, hold medicine and hold energy and hold cultural knowing and wisdom that are much more ancient than us as a single human and so ancient tales are actually one of those culturally generated forces that come out of telling and retelling and and traditions of oral history so this is important because for most of humanity we were not literate broadly literate and so story and knowledge and meaning and understanding was always passed down through the more ephemeral arts what what are now considered in most cultures as not as important as um, the big thinking processes, but are actually incredibly important. Um, hand, handwork, textiles, ceramics, dance, um, storytelling <clears throat> are all ways that we create meaning. And so with storytelling, we have ancient tales that have been, certain tales have been traced back to being 6,000 years old or more through linguistic studies. And when you consider a story that has managed to survive that long through waves of colonization and waves of different kinds of religions taking over an area and a culture, through language changes, uh, through mostly an, a tradition of oral history until the last one or 200 years, really, when things started to get written down, um, when we choose an ancient tale that resonates with us and we start to work with it, with, with it, these stories that seem quite simple, they start revealing an incredible amount of guidance. And from the perspective of finding a theme or a pattern to work with and a, um, a force, the, the resonating force in your life, the ancient tale that we choose immediately offers us a narrative arc and two or three themes that we can work with and set everything else aside until the next memoir. So the nice thing about memoir work is it's not just one and done. It's not like an autobiography, which is a linear list of your life and events, but a memoir is a writing memoir is a way of working with yourself and a certain experience or theme to understand more deeply yourself in that context. So, my outline your memoir workshop i actually prefer people take it before they sign up for my course because then i don't have to explain and educate how important um, working with something like a fairy tale or a myth actually is to the rest of the process unfolding yeah this is very helpful and also you just mentioned this difference between autobiography and memoir and that's really good as well it's like autobiographical is more about listing facts it's like it's like a personal history yeah whereas a memoir is really telling a story and, and reframing it into something really meaningful mm -hmm. um so can you give us some tips so let's say someone is or, or 
or, or, or kind of walk us through the structure of that, that free two hour workshop? Like what, what are we actually doing during that time? Mm, it's a really productive workshop. Um, we start uh, in, in the recording. I, I actually explain a fair bit about my own self and my background and my life for two reasons. One is so you get to know me as a teacher if you're thinking about my work, but also to demonstrate by example how I'm selecting the different events of my life to illustrate how I got to the point where I teach this kind of work. So it's a bit of a, a very short um, storytelling in action sort of exercise. And then I, I do three things in order. Um, I get people to choose a favorite ancient tale. And I talk people through what to do if they really can't figure that out. Sometimes it's a bit of a foreign concept we've really moved away from storytelling as a, a way of life in the sense of storytelling to each other. Um, we consume a lot of stories because through TV and film, but it, that's a little different than a tradition of speaking it to each other. So sometimes it's a, such a new concept. Um, and so I have some options if you can't figure out a favorite ancient tale right away. Um, and then we make a timeline of that. I'm not going to give it all away because it takes a lot more time to explain than the time we've got together, but we make a timeline, not of our own lives, but of the fairy tale first. And then we go through a, a document I provide. It's called the Rites of Passage document. We go through that so that people have a chance to um, take in all the possibility of experiences in your life that are transformative so it's a document that is really great as a writing prompt resource if if someone thinks they don't have a lot of good stories for example if they circle even five things on that document that'll generate a bunch of stories but what we actually do next is we create a life story timeline and we put the um, things that are relevant from the rites of passage document into the life story timeline and so here's where we actually do get linear, even though my uh, experience and perception of time is that it's much more circular. It really helps to just make a linear timeline from start to finish. So we create a life story timeline and the two hour workshop is really not enough time to get it all done, but it's enough time for me to set people on their process um, to feel like they know how to organize ideas and material going forward if they want to keep working on their own or even in my course they still have to generate that material um, and then the last step is actually reflecting back onto the two timelines to look for shared patterns and themes and without fail I've taught this workshop live um, over 15 times now in the last year and a half without fail there's always some really cool insight um, that arises and uh, offers a reframing of someone's ideas about themselves and their life. So, and the reframing is really important because we get so stuck in our ideas of who we are and what we've experienced that, that when we get stuck in a specific idea, we don't allow all the other memories and options and experiences and possibilities available to us into our consciousness. And so the reframing opens things up, makes things more spacious for us as we kind of turn around and look down and back in our own lives. Wow, that sounds like such a rich uh, workshop and you're able to accomplish this in two hours. It's amazing. <laughs> well. Um, and well, you've done it. You've done it more than a dozen times. So, uh, of course, when people register, they're, they're seeing the latest version of it. Um, so thank you so much for, for sharing that process. Um, I will again put the link. So those of you watching this, look below the video or above <laughs> wherever the links are and uh, find the link to the two hour on demand free um, outline your memoir workshop. And you also have a couple other resources. I want to just mention that I will link in uh, the notes of the video, which is one of them is 10 impactful memoir writing prompts for healing and transformation. So that's uh, that's one link. Um, Another link is 10 gentle yet effective ways to heal painful memories. 
using writing and your body. So that's really, that's there as well. So um, for those people who are thinking, gosh, okay, yes, I want to do this two hour um, online workshop. And if they need more after that, you have the, the complete course for them to, to do. Um, so tell us about, tell us a bit about that. Uh, people like how, how long is, is the full course if they wanted to take it? I don't know if it's too much to talk about here, but give us a, a quick sense of that. A quick overview. Yeah. Um, so those three links will actually, um, part of signing up, you'll get an invitation into the self-directed version of my course, which is available for sign up at any time. Um, I teach the same material two different ways. One is self-directed, which is 13 modules um, contained in a platform off of Facebook called Mighty Networks, which includes the course as well as the community space. And so with the self-directed version, of course, it's cheaper because it's less intensive for me to offer. You get lifetime access to the material as well as um, the online community and monthly coaching calls from me, which are quite informal. They're just all about showing up to address whatever healing and creative writing challenges are arising for folks. So that's the self-directed version. Um, and then once or twice a year, I teach the same thing live. So when someone signs up for the live version, uh, in addition to everything, in the self-directed version, and some people actually upgrade from self-directed to live. We have five months of weekly calls in small class sizes. So um, my classes are always between five and 12 people per class because it's really designed for dis discussion and connection. And um, part of the healing process is actually showing up together to explore our stories through the lens of the different really cool themes in my modules um, and be able to be in a, a space that is safe and solid enough to share very openly and honestly wherever you're at. So it's my favorite thing, teaching the live version. Nice, yeah. that's really great. Well, the, the place of course is to start um, is the free two hour yeah. um, practical workshop that's online. So folks, you know, go ahead and, and do that and you'll, you'll have a, a really good sense of what your outline is going to be and then mm -hmm. whether or not you want to continue doing the work with Janelle or to, to do it on your own. Um, so, you know, one of the things I guess as we close off is um, this process of kind of reflecting and mining the meaningful stories in our life, I think it can also be used in our you know, like I talk to people a lot, a lot about content creation for, for their business. But of course, when we're creating an authentic business, uh, the content uh, ideally uh, can, should be as personal as possible or as personally meaningful as possible. So uh, I can imagine that this memoir writing process also creates potential content for it, our yeah, business. Quote, quote. It does. Actually, one of my testimonials was from a naturopathic doctor who took my course a few years ago. And one of the th things she commented, she was in the middle of building her practice and her website and business online. And she, she shared that she was so excited that she had so many ideas for blog posts and content for her business through the process of working with her life story. So that was very cool to hear. That's yeah, not surprised. So I look forward to seeing how people benefit from that. And thank you so much, Janelle, for doing your work. Any, any final kind of words of send off for us uh, as we close this, um, close this interview? Oh, um, well, I would just say everyone is interesting and everyone has a story and mm. there are always people interested in honestly told story, no matter yeah. what you might think of it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Janelle. Mm -hmm. Thank you.